Hello, American apparel wearers. You look so perfect standing there. I don't, but I look perfect with my clipboard, the clipboard that tells you and tells me that we've reached the last week of the regular season and I can't wing it. I never actually do wing it because I'm not a buffalo wing. I need to rely on this to tell you about playoff scenarios, but first I want to tell you about Norfolk Catholic's 35 to seven win over Pierce. Dylan Couts, a freshman who's had a great season for the Knights, showed just how good he is in this one. He had 17 carries for 122 yards as Norfolk Catholic pulled away in the second half for the win. A 44 yard touchdown run and he had, he had in the third quarter showed that he has a pretty incredible burst, not just for a freshman, but for any high school football player. Catholic looks pretty much assured of a playoff spot, as does Boone Central Newman Grove in Class C1. A couple teams that are going to need a little help to get in. Well, O'Neill is in with a win. They would clinch the uh, district championship. Pierce is going to need a little help. The Blue Jays kind of have to rely on West Point Beamer. They kind of have to rely on, hopefully, Kozad in their case to beat O'Neill, a team that they beat 47 to nothing earlier in the year to get a spot. But there's so many things that can happen, it's really hard to predict exactly what's going to happen. In Class C2, three teams, Battle Creek, West Holt, and Oakland Craig look like locks for the playoffs. Crofton and Stanton can get in, but they're both going to need some help. Crofton can help itself by beating West Holt this week. Battle Creek could very well be the top seed, in which case they might have a new Super Bowl shuffle. Now you go down to the eight-man levels and it looks like there's going to be quite a few more teams. In Class D1, it's looking like 10 area teams, highlighted by Creighton, Guardian Angel Central Catholic, and Neely Oakdale. Neely Oakdale had a big win over Elgin Public Pope John this past week. They were actually down 22-7 to early after the Wolfpack scored 22 points in a minute 10 seconds. But the Warriors righted the ship. They managed to fight off 256 rushing yards on 45 carries by Andrew Fangman of Elgin Public Pope John. Just incredible numbers. And they, uh, they got a 37-30 win to claim a district championship and vault them into the playoffs with a little bit of momentum. In Class D2, a team that's really vaulted itself all year long is Chambers Wheeler Central. And Chambers Wheeler Central, if this was pole vault, they vaulted the equivalent of 27 feet 4 inches last week with an 80-44 to win over Osmond. Osmond was undefeated going into this game, and they put up 80 points. That's more points than most basketball teams score. That's more points than you can score in cribbage, I believe, but I haven't played cribbage since I was 12. Brendan Pelster, phenomenal quarterback for the Renegades, proved that he probably is the best player in, player in Class D2. 6 of 10 throwing the ball for 174 yards, 3 touchdowns. He had 16 carries for 202 yards and 7 more touchdowns. And defensively, 17 tackles and an interception as the Renegades improved to 7-0. Pretty much locked up the number one seed whichever direction they go, and that's one of the things in classes D1 and D2 that's going to be determined this week, because right now it appears the Chambers Wheeler Central is the best team in class D2. Humphrey St. Francis might be the second best, and it appears that they would go east and west, but there's several two-win teams in the state that can change that, and that's the beauty of playing football in the middle of October, as is the weather. Some beautiful sunsets, as we noted last week in Neely. Don't know how the sun's going to set this week, but I do know that it's going to rise next week and it's going to be playoff season and everybody's going to want to love each other and hug each other and make each other the principal of their elementary school, but they can't do that because they don't have the school board's authority and they're uncertain as to whether that person actually even is qualified to be a principal. I'm not, but I am qualified to say goodbye. Tom Beamer for the buzz.